if you want to be on uh, our messages, it's God's Grace Church. I'm used to doing this because on the tenth, as you you notice here, God's Grace Ministries of Navajo Nation have asked us to minister to the uh, ministers up there and the workers, and so um, I want to get used to doing that. And our special prayers today again are for those affected by storms in the east and fires in the west, for all those afflicted by the pandemic. pandemic. And we find out in Europe the second wave has started because everybody's loosening up and we think it's okay. And I'm just praying that we're going to get serious about this so we can get back to, to church. But it won't happen until we realize we have a problem and it's up to us to fix it. And God will help us as long as we're doing what we're supposed to do. Those in the frontline workers, you know, there's still a lot of them don't have the right equipment, and we need to pray for them, and those that are trying to protect us. So, Father God, we come before you in Jesus' name, and we just knock at the door, Lord. We just ask you for, especially the doctors and the nurses and the caretakers, give them wisdom, Lord, on how to handle uh, this, and the scientists, Lord God. We need our scientists to whatever you need to have them do. And I know if they call upon you, you're going to answer them. So we pray for all these in Jesus' name that your will is going to be done because we know that by your stripes we were already healed. So we want to receive healing in that area, protection in that area. But remember, we have to do our part. And, and our memory verse today is uh, 2 Peter 1.12. For this reason, I will not... Uh, or I'll always be ready, I won't be negligent, to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in present truth. And Paul in Philippians 3.1, he also mentioned something like this. In other words, we need to hear things, my comments are something like this, in the soulish realm, we need to hear things seven times before we remember it. Yet the Holy Spirit can bring things up into our remembrance when we have the word planted in us. And uh, a lot of times you don't know what to tell somebody or what to say. And all of it, there's the answer that comes up into your mind. And that's the Holy Spirit bringing it to you. Our offering scripture this morning is in Luke 6, 38. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, press, press down, shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use, notice, receiving is also what you're giving. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured to you. You want love? You give love. You want to be a friend? You become one. You want a friend? You become one. Our second offering, this is the second week, I believe, is for Forerunner Ministries, Mark and Jenna Lee Johnson. Uh, special ministry. You can send your tithes and offerings through our website, PayPal. And I thank you for all those that are sending in your tithes and offerings. And remember, if you send in an offering for, uh, like, let's say for the Navajo Nation, just write it on the comment below. Otherwise, it, it will go into the, uh, the tithe column, an offering column for the church. And uh, we have PayPal and also... Uh, it's free when you use your bank's uh, bill pay application. Uh, nobody gets charged, and they mail it right to the church. Or That's what a lot of you are doing. And PayPal, thank you, Lord. Or mail your gift to God's Grace Church at 2400 Southern, uh, West Southern Avenue, Suite 102, Tempe, Arizona, 85282. And those of you that can get together for a prayer in the Spirit tonight at 7 o'clock for all this that's going on. Remember, this is worldwide. This isn't just our country. This is uh, affecting the world. And I keep hearing, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then we will hear from heaven and he will heal our land. And notice he's not talking to the unsaved. He's talking to the saved there. Uh, and then the Zoom meeting, Monday night, September 21st at 7 p.m. Pastor Al 
wants to have a Zoom meeting with everyone who can be online and attend. Please contact Charles. Or the best thing to do is let him know on our church email, God's Grace Church, AZ at gmail.com. And our Bible study on Wednesday night will be teaching We Can Know the Lord Intimately. And I think uh, somebody was just telling me they listened to a teaching or heard a that God wants a relationship with us. See, we're like a husband and wife. We are the wife of Christ. And when he talks about the bride of Christ, he wants to be in- intimate with us. And I was asking the Lord, uh, okay, we'll get started now on the message. <laughs> Thanks, honey, for doing what you had to do. Uh, the message today, I asked the Lord, what do you want me to teach? You know, I don't just point my finger at the Bible, close my eyes and open it up, hope it's a good message. Uh, I, I have to get revelation from the Lord. And I said, uh, Lord, something like this. Uh, what do you want me to teach on Sunday? I'm, I don't, I'm not getting anything. And all of a sudden, I saw the last five Sunday messages. And our memory verse for today is for this reason. And I'm going to use the New American Standard. I always want to. I always want. To, I always would be reminded. You always says. See, and that's why would you learn a scripture like meditate upon this scripture? And you can probably find a better translation, which it's uh, that neglect to neglect. Uh, we're not to neglect any of this, and so. We learn these scriptures like Philippians 3.1. Paul says, it doesn't bother me to tell you the same thing over and over again. And so they were writing these things. They weren't on the mic like we are right now on the internet. They wrote letters to the churches. And so what are we doing when we come to the word? Last Wednesday night, if you didn't get the message, you need to get it because why do I have to study? Why does the Bible say study? To prove thy uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed. In other words, you're going to go uh, uh, to do some labor, like build a house, and you left your your tools at home. Well, we need the tools, the word of the God, to help us fight the good fight of faith. We have to learn how to use the sword, the shield, all this equipment. And we found out that in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says the renewing of the mind. See, the world is constantly bombarding us, uh, even commercials. You go into a store and they're talking about certain things to get you to buy certain things. Telephone calls. And everything is to get, whether I know they're doing that on purpose, I don't know. But all the cares of this world takes our eyes off Jesus. And that's when we get in trouble. That's when the sword, uh, excuse me, your shield is Jesus Christ. And when you look in another direction and start going like this, you're losing your protection. And that's why we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. It says the the cares of this world, chirp the word, it's still as strong in you as always. But what happens is the cares become more important than God does. And that's when you find yourself slipping and sliding in the world. And so there was, uh, and then I better say this, Hebrews 11, 1, everybody knows it. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then verse 6, it says, uh, without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's the rewarder to those who diligently, that's the same word for study, diligently seek him. So this morning, I want us to be diligent to seek him so we can understand. And it's amazing, these five last subjects, the first one, and I have them all dated in case you ever want them, uh, on 8-9 was resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I've just had so much confirmation lately about how we're at, a, a, we're at war with the devil. We're not at war with humans. Some of you are getting all uptight about the election and all you're going to do is hurt one another. 
And we're not fighting the Democrats. We're not fighting the Republicans. And then I want to give you a scripture that we've got to quit touching things that don't belong to us. See, the Bible says, I, I placed before you, this is Deuteronomy 30, I'm placing before you two things, life and death, two things, blessings and cursing. I have a choice to choose life. That's my choice. I have a choice to choose death. That's my choice. I have a choice to, uh, to choose curses or blessings. That's my choice. And there's certain things, the law, you can't law morals because it never works. I have a choice to choose what I want. Now, that's your choice. You can choose whatever you want. I, I, I want to choose life. I want to choose blessings. And if you don't know the Bible, how do you know which is which? And, th and that's what we need to start doing. The devil is constantly bombarding us with things that don't even matter. And then we get all uptight about them. I know. I do too. But, but it, what it does, it, take, it knocks down the shield. And the next one was on 816, the morning star rises in your hearts. That's when we talk about the glory of the Lord is in us. And then we had on 823, but grow in grace. See, growing in grace means I understand I'm saved. I've got this divine favor over me that chose me even before there was a world. Uh, my name was written in the book of life before the foundations of the earth. And then the fourth one was, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. And that's one thing we've got to start living for Christ. When you live for Christ, there's a joy that you have. And all this other stuff doesn't really matter because all this is going to be done away with anyway. And then the last one, on last Sunday, 913, he shall be like a tree. And so we'll see how much time we have to cover. But uh, I'd like to show you, uh, I know we all know these scriptures. And I'm going to start out in, I'm not sure if you have this or not, in, in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10. And, y you know, we, we hear things, and I, I don't want to judge people, but, uh, you know, I've heard uh, so many teachings on the gifts died with the apostles, uh, all this stuff, it was just for the 12. Well, I'm going to destroy that belief right now because there's no place in the Bible that says it stopped with the apostles. Uh, notice in chapter 10 in verse 1, remember, there was 12. So if there was only 12 and one killed himself, then they put another one in. I, I believe I have 20, I found 23 apostles in the New Testament, literally apostles, ministers of God. That also means uh, apostle. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. Now, wait a minute. He's got 12 plus 70. Oh, my gosh, we've got 82 now. That's more than 12. Right here, it shows you that the Lord's authority, and then in Acts 1.8, it says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. And it talks about going all over the world. And what does he say in, in the last two verses in uh, Matthew 28? He says, uh, uh, go into all the world, make disciples of all men, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And what does it say? Teaching them, let them observe what I've taught you. And so here he is, he's sending out 70. So I just showed you two other scriptures. The, the apostles are physically dead. But Jesus said, I'm going to be with you to the end of the world. So it, what it's talking about, the anointing is still here. The Holy Spirit's still here. We received the same gift the, whole, the apostles did, according to two or three different places in Acts. And so he says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two. Now go to verse 17. Now they come back, they're all excited. Why? Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. See, what does it say in Mark 16, 17? In my name you shall cast out demons. And he's 
that's, that's our job still today. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you, Al, he's talking, the Bible is God speaking to me. They are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Behold, Al, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. That's talking about demonic forces. And over all the power, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, we know they got physically tormented. The apostles did, the early church. But in the spirit, none of these demons can take Christ away from you. My choice is to stay with him. Amen. That's why I, I believe I'm eternally secure because I, I choose him, not the world. Nevertheless, do not rejoice. So don't rejoice because demons are coming out of people. I've had a lot, or know a lot of people, or I've known a lot of people that basically uh, got into serious trouble when they went, I'm going to go find me some demon-possessed people. And they got beat up. Paul I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? And they got their clothes ripped. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to your name, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You notice we don't brag about this casting out demons. Even the angel led there to approach, approach him about uh, Moses' body. Remember? Or, yeah, Moses' body. He said, I, I, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. He didn't take the authority on himself. And so we all know James 4, 7, and that's the one that says, uh, therefore submit, and that's the word for obedience, obey to God. So therefore submit to God. So the key is to submit to God. That's it right there. Now, after you submit it to God, like notice when the Lord's Prayer is teaching us how to pray, you don't bring your problem first. You, you minister to the Lord first. And then it says resist, and that means to stand against. And it says in Ephesians 6, when you're putting on the whole armor of God, after you've done all, stand. We have to keep standing until it comes to pass. And that word uh, resist means to stand against. And in 1 Peter 5, 9, what does he say? The same thing. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so it says here in James 4, 7, resist the devil and he will flee. And that means to run away. He runs away or he vanishes from you. And in Matthew 4, 4 and verse 7 and verse 10, Jesus just came out of the wilderness. He hadn't eaten in 40 days. And what what does, the temp, what does the tempter tempt him with? The three sins. One of them, you know, the, there's the eyes, the flesh. And, and what happens? Turn these stones into food. Right away, he uses, Satan always uses natural things to tempt us. Puts him up on a high pinnacle. I'll give you all this. He can have the whole world. All these promises. And what does Jesus do? He teaches us a lesson. He says, it is written. Notice he didn't say, this is what uh, Brother Al said. This is what Brother Bob said. This is what Charles said. No, it is written. And he quoted scripture. If G he didn't talk to him, he didn't start saying, uh, don't mess with me. No, it is written. And he quoted the scripture. And in Luke 4.13, when, when the same thing happened, he said that the, the tempter left for a more opportune time. So just because you got rid of the devil today doesn't mean he's not going to hit you an hour from now. And usually he nails you right after you've heard the word because he wants to steal the word. How does he get to steal the word out of us? It's because we don't understand it or we're dull of hearing. There's many reasons why we don't keep it. But it's all up to us. And so in Ephesians 4.27, it says, don't give place to the devil. Well, if, we, if there's no devil, what is he talking about? 
Don't give place. We open the door to him. And it can come in so many ways, like types of witchcraft that you just think is just, well, I'm just playing a game. And is it demonic? You know, like reading your future. That We're not to do that unless you're doing it out of the Bible. And then, of course, uh, putting on the whole armor of God in Ephesians. And so it is so important that we learn how to resist the devil because he's he, those demonic forces, and they come in different types. They come through humans, and uh, you have to admit, these people that are really uh, raping people and killing people the way they're doing, it's not natural for man to do what they're doing. There's a demonic force behind this, and I'm telling you, we're under a, a demonic force right now. And we've got to stand on God's word if you want to stay right with God. And then the next one that we talked about was the morning star rises in your heart. And that's in 2 Peter 1.19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in dark places until the day dawns and the morning star arises where rises in your hearts. Praise God. And uh, I added some scripture to that. And one of them is in Acts 13. And I just wanted to show this to you. In Acts, thir Acts 13, because there's so much that we have to understand about this light that it is in us. Because Jesus said in Matthew uh, 5, he said, Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works, but who gets the glory? But God gets the glory. And notice what he says It's in verse 47. This is Acts 13, 47. It says, For so the Lord has commanded us, not just Paul, us. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles. Let's just call them the unbelievers. And believers that need help that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth goes along with acts 1 8 so this morning star that's going <clears> to <throat> rise upon us and i know last week i gave you uh isaiah uh, when we did this was isaiah 60 and <clears throat> this, this is uh I saw this so many years ago, but here's what I see. The darker it becomes, in gross darkness, King James called us. And this word darkness means ignorance, misery, wickedness, destruction. And in the end times, we're going to have more wickedness than we ever have, as it was in the days of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be worse than that. So in Isaiah 60, notice what it says, verse 1. Arise, shine, let your light, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And when Jesus had his final prayer that he was praying, the longest prayer is in uh, John 17, verse 10. He says, the glory that you have given me, I have given I'm glorified through them. Then verse 22 says, The glory that you have given me, Lord, I, Father, I have given to them. This glory is in us. All those scriptures, we're the temple of God. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're the, we're the house of Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, examine yourselves, whether you know of a surety that Christ is in you. See, the glory is already in you. The darker it becomes, the brighter we're supposed to be coming. And so this is what he's saying here. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is going to be risen where? Upon you. For behold, darkness and it shall cover the earth, and deep, and this is where uh, the King James says, and gross darkness in the people. But the Lord will raise, ri arise over you. His glory will be seen upon you. I, I love this. 
The Gentiles, there it is again, what Paul was talking about 2,000 years ago. The unbelievers shall come to your light and kings to the remembrance of your rising. And I, I know I say this a lot, but in First Peter 5, it says uh, that we're to be examples to the flock. And I believe the first example we're supposed to be is to our, if we're married, to our mate, our children, uh, our, the church we belong to, where we work, the school we go to. We're to be the example. We're to be the Christ-like ones because we're being made into his image. And you know, we all come short of the glory. And when you come short of the glory, that's a time to repent. And saying, you know what, Lord, I should have kept my mouth shut. Uh, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. And maybe sometimes we have to say to somebody else, you know, I shouldn't have said that. And that doesn't hurt anybody. It helps you when you admit you made a mistake. So there's so many scriptures about Christ in you, the hope of glory. And I just wanted you to see that again today. And what we did on uh, 823 was, but grow in grace. And in 2 Peter 3.18 is the scripture we use, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. And uh, in John 15.16, and we're not going to turn there, but I would like to have you turn to Ephesians chapter 2. In John 15.16, he says, I have chosen you. You did not choose me. I've ordained you to go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. And then we see in, in I think it's verse uh, uh, 5, where the Father is glorified that we bring forth much fruit. So our fruit, remember we talked about we're the trees. Uh, picture yourself as an apple tree or an olive tree. Edison was just telling me that the olive tree uh, has to grow along with dirt clay. And, and you see, we, we said uh, that we're like trees. Well, this uh, clay is what the Bible calls in uh, chapter 18 of Jer uh, Jeremiah. He's the potter, we're the clay. So we talked about that last week, last time, whenever we talked about it. Uh, but grow in grace. Got carried away there for a moment. Get to that in a moment. In Ephesians chapter 2, notice this is what we were. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. And to you're born again, your spirit is basically dead. It's worldly. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves. We were all there. The lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, oh, I love this. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, notice we were spiritually dead, in tre trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. But by grace we have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, you know, I don't feel like I'm in heaven right now, but this is what the Bible says. My spirit is one with God right now. Praise God. The flesh is having a hard time getting this. But notice that raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly realm, that in ages to come he might show exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us, in Christ Jesus, for by grace, the favor of God, we have the favor of God. We're his children. He's the, 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 the shepherd of the pasture. He's the, he's the shepherd. 
For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. You can't even take credit. He gave you them, <clears throat> according to uh, Romans 12, I believe it's 3, he gave you the measure of faith to get saved. And the Holy Spirit is moving right now. Anybody that wants to get saved, it's our choice. I can choose eternity with him or eternity in hell. That's my choice. Nobody can make it for me. Nobody can make me get saved or make me not get saved. It's all up to me. And that's what the hardest thing there is. Because remember, the, our example is our forefathers. And that was Adam and Eve. And he said to Adam, See all these trees? You can eat of any one of them. You can do anything you want today. God, anything you want to do, do sin, whatever it is. But he said, if you eat of this tree, you're going to die. Well, he didn't literally die. He lived 900 and something years. What did that mean? He spiritually died. And so when we get this new life, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit comes into this temple. It's called the, don't you know, Paul said, do you know of a surety that Christ is in you? Or are you a retrobate? He says, don't you know that uh, that y y you, you are the temple of God. And that was a rebuke to them. They still didn't get it after. There's a, a Corinthian letter missing. Three Corinthian letters, and they still didn't understand the dwelling place of God. And that's if you understand Moses' tabernacle, it'll give you a better understanding of the dwelling place, which is the most holy. It says we can come boldly right now. This very moment we can come into the presence of God. We don't have to wait anymore. The veil has been rent. And that's what happened when he rose. Hallelujah. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. We can't say, well, I done this for you, and I done this for you. Give me a pat on the back. No, you can't take any credit for being saved. It's all the Lord's doing. Thank you, Lord. For we are his workmanship. We're, uh, one translation says, pa uh, masterpiece. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. What are we created for? Good works. Now watch this. Which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Your path has already been planned. And that's why it's so important to pray the will of God because that means you're praying what he wants for you. And if you pray your own prayers and your own what you want, that's you. That's not him. And so all of a sudden you realize, that's why that little comment that came to me from the Lord, seek the healer, not the healing, because you're so busy seeking to be healed that you forget about who's the healer. The healer is the Lord Jesus Christ. Even when you go to the doctor, the healer is still the Lord Jesus Christ. And you pray for protection while you go. And so that grace message, when you get that down, down I'm telling you, that fear of death is almost absolutely gone. But you have to understand the grace message. And I was so, I told you this before, I was so afraid to teach on this because you're thinking everybody's just going to go do whatever they want to do. They're saved anyway. No, if you love God, you're going to love God, not the devil. And that's a biggie right there. It's my choice. I'm choosing life. I'm choosing blessings. That is my choice, and I'm taking it. The devil comes not to steal, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more, more, more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. And then in John 16.33, in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Many scriptures talk about the trials we're going to go through. You shall have tribulation. What's the key? Be of good cheer. How can I be of good cheer? Because he says, I'm never going to leave you, Al. I'm never going to forsake you. Even when you pass through the waters, I'm going to be with you. When you pass through the flame, I'm going to be there. Even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to be there. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13, 5. And so th this is so important. to. And we talked about, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And uh, I, I, we're in Ephesians Go over to chapter 13. We're already there. And in verse 15, 
3.15 of Ephesians, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And he would grant you, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might. Where? Through the Spirit in the inner man. We're renewing our mind so the inner, inner strength can come up and throw away a lot of this doubt and unbelief. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? Through faith. You need faith. How do you get faith? It comes by hearing the word. Uh, the statistics, and it can't go by statistics a lot, but the statistics I've heard is very few Christians today read the Bible. One statistic says it's about every three months unless they go to church. And we forget that's where our strength comes from. That's where our faith comes from is in the, the word of God. That you being rooted, notice, rooted and grounded where in love. That's why I said this. I say these things and people take it wrong uh, because I don't have to f- preach fire and brimstone. On a Wednesday night, I just proved there is a hell out of the word of God. And uh, as a Christian, we know there's a heaven and a hell. And, but see, the world knows what we're against, but they don't have any idea what we're for. And we're for love. See, right now, somebody just told me, one of our leaders just told me, Pastor L, I really believe we need to start praying for unity. We're, we're in trouble in that area right now, in unity. And uh, he's not coming back, according to Ephesians. I could just turn the page over, and well, I'll read it to you. One of the seven things our job is to do is, to, verse 13 of 4, till we all come to the unity of the faith. Well, I'm telling you, Christians aren't in unity right now, so he's not coming today. So we better start preparing. Why isn't he coming today? Because we're not in unity. We're, we're being blinded by all this other stuff. We've got to keep our eyes on Jesus, not this. This is destroying the church by pointing the finger. And you point the finger, guess what? You've got four coming back, three coming back at you and one up to God. Now you've got to reap it. And help me, Lord, because I'm just as guilty. Now watch this. Verse 18. May be able to comprehend. Didn't say you would be. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth and height. What is this all about? You know, every answer we really need, eventually we find it. If you search for them, as silver and gold. They are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. And I always make you pinch yourself so you know what your flesh is. Your spirit is perfect. I am delivered, I'm being delivered, and I will be delivered. I'm going to get a new body someday. And I don't know, I might even have hair in heaven. You know, so I might have to come up to you and say, hey, you remember me? I was the bald one. (laughs) It's just... (laughs) Anyway, praise God. To know the love of Christ, notice this, that passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Wow. He was full with all the fullness of God. And Paul said, we can be filled with all the fullness of God. How can that be? He's living in us. We have to understand that. This grace message how to he, now to him who is able, notice he's able, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to the power that works where? In us. And uh, I, I want to show you another scripture about that that I quote a lot. Just go to the next book, which is Philippians chapter 2. And we talk about this a lot, verse 12. We're in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Notice, I have to work this out into my soul, then into my body. No, no, verse 13 is the key. 
For it is God who works in you. He's in you, working in you. What is he doing? Notice, both to will and to do a good pleasure. Not my pleasure. Your will be done, Lord. I know a lot of us get criticized for praying that prayer, but that's what Jesus had to do in the garden. And that's what it says in James to do. What is your will, Lord? And so when we, when we fa- start, uh, what does it go in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. All your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And so uh, the last one that we talked on last Sunday, uh, 9.13, he shall be like a tree. And we, we started out, I believe, in Psalm 1.3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit. Remember, we talked about the fruit, how the Father is glorified if we bring forth much fruit. Fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. We found out those other scriptures that say that the the leaves are green. That means they're alive. They don't, uh, they're new every, they're for medicine even. Uh, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And all that was if we don't take the counsel of the world. And it's important that you just see those scripts first. I think there's six, six scriptures there, and they're so powerful. And then uh, on your notes, I have planted by the rivers of water. First Corinthians 3.9 uh, it, t- it says that we're the building of God. He's the farmer. We're the field. Uh, the water of the word. And in uh, John 4.14, 4, Jesus said, you know, I can give you well water or a, a fountain of water. Then in John 7.38, he says, I can, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. So, we have this water of life in us. And uh, I love this in Isaiah. It's on your notes, 61.3, to console or to appoint those who mourn in Zion. Are you mourning today? Are you going through something? We're seeing there's more suicides during this pandemic. Uh, people are just uh, depressed, oppressed, and Here's, he, he gives us the answer. He tells us what to do, but we have to do it. Notice it says, those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty, and that means life for ashes. That means for, I'm going to give you life instead of death. Remember, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And what does he say? The oil of joy for mourning. I'm going to give you joy. This inner joy, I know that I know that I'm not alone. He's never going to leave me. He's never going to forsake me. The garment of praise, there it is, the garment of praise. What is he saying here for the spirit of heaviness? Lord, I'm just going to praise you right now. I'm going to just honor you. Lord, I'm going to just release my mind right now just to praise you and, and serve you right now. And this is what happens then that heavy spirit starts to leave. And a lot of this stuff is demonic spirits, you know, like the spirit of suicide. That could be a bloodline problem, a familiar spirit, and you have to know how to deal with these things. That's why it says, in my name, you're going to cast out demons. If you've got a problem in that, that area, you talk to that area. That they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. And we found out in 1 Corinthians 3, 9, that we're the planting of the Lord. We're his field. We're his garden. That he may be glorified. And I gave you those scriptures, John 17, 10, and 22. And then we talked a little bit about the one in Ezekiel, about the trees. And I, I learned this a long time ago. I, I think it was uh, Gary Schmidt that taught me this. If you want to understand Humans study trees. If you want to understand uh, the Holy Spirit, study what rivers do 
to things. I mean, they make a path, and you can't stop it. You can build a dam, but eventually it's going to go over that dam. Ezekiel 47, 12, along the bank of the rivers, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. There's that out of your belly. Well, where's the sanctuary now? You're the temple of God. It has to come out of you. Notice how we pray, Oh, Lord, come. No, we ought to say, Thank you, Lord, you've already come. He can't come without you. Now get that one. He can't come without you. That where Notice he says in John 14, that where I am, you shall be also. Where is he right now? He's seated in me. Well, I thought he said he's seated at the right hand of God. We just read, we are old. We're there right now too. What's there? The Spirit. And until you have the Spirit, how can you understand spiritual things? That's why uh, a lot of people read the Bible because it just sounds good. But boy, when you read it to get fed, this, he says, I am the bread of life. Their fruit will be for food. And according to Rome, uh, Revelations chapter 12, we're supposed to feed uh, those that are in the wilderness for three and a half years. Notice, we're going to be the food. We're going to bring the word of God. We're going to bring the life with the word of God. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. So, uh, I think this has been an exciting five is the number of grace and we found out that we can resist the devil and he can flee or basically disappear. He doesn't even exist. And when he comes back, shut up in Jesus name. And then we found out the morning star. We're going to let the light so shine through us that they're going to see our good works and glorify God. And then we found out, oh my God, God chose me. I can't even take credit for my salvation. No, he gave me the, I mean, he measured me the faith to accept him. And it came out of, for me, it came out of my mother's mouth. She says, if you ask Jesus to come into your heart, he will. So I asked him, he did. And so this is why we need to minister the gospel so people can get saved. They have to know <clears throat> how simple this is. And, and that we found out Right now, no matter, even if you're in a bed of affliction, you can still have life. You can still be alive. Your spirit can be alive. And I've seen so many people on their deathbed alive and wondering why they're still here and still ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then, then this being like a tree and it... Uh, <clears throat> I think, yeah, Mark 8, 24, <clears throat> Jesus, this blind man, wants to be healed. And so he takes him aside and he spits. <laughs> Do that today, you probably get sued. He spit on his eyes and he, and he laid hands on him. He says, what do you see? He says, I see men like trees. And that hit me to prove to me that if you want to know what humans are like, study trees. All these storms, why do some trees fall and others don't? Why, did, why are all the palm trees standing tall? And all through my neighborhood, I just lost three queen palms because they couldn't handle the sun. They're, they're totally different. The palm trees, and the Bible talks, we're, we're supposed to be like palm trees. And supposedly, they have long lives. We're supposed to have a long life. The Bible teaches that we're to have a long life. One of the keys is honoring your father and your mother will guarantee long life. And so that's, that's so important. And I know the song we used to sing in Psalm 52, 8, you're like a tree, like a green olive tree. So it, it's a type. What are we supposed to be like? We're supposed to be bearing fruit. And that olive tree brings forth the oil that represents the Holy Spirit. So with all that, that was a lot of teachings and not even an hour's time. And so, uh, I don't know, I, I, I feel fed. 
<laughs> I feel like I've been fit. <laughs> and, and, but see how good these messages are. And what I love about this, you don't, if you don't watch it now, you can watch it later. Uh, Charles always says you should watch it at least twice so you get it down. But if you get the notes and just, I put in a lot of notes for a reason. Uh, and, and if you circle that, that scripture, and that just, it's your code, I'll look at it. When I, when I get a chance, I'm going to look at that. I need to study that scripture to see what it really says. Because you're supposed to test me. You're supposed to check me out. So I, I just want to speak a blessing over you and remind you, we have a choice this morning. We can choose life or death. Blessings or cursings. A lot of people are alive today physically, but mentally and spiritually, they're not alive. They're being controlled by the powers of darkness. And if you don't know how to discern spirits, it's very troubling. So, Lord, I just believe that your will is going to be done in each one of us, Lord God. You're going to be working through us to proclaim the truth. And truth will stand. Lies will not. And I don't know if you know this or not, but the Bible says liars are going to be outside of, of the temple in Revelations, the last chapter, or it could be 21. And, and, and it's amazing how we're all in this temple of God, but yet the liars, and all it mentions a long list of people that are outside. They're outside. And Paul said, those that are inside, we have a right to judge. But those who are outside, God will judge. And so if you're inside, that means you're in the body of Christ. If you're outside, that means you're on your own with the devil. So be free today. Join the, the body of Christ. It's so simple. If you've, you know, you're telling somebody uh, how to get saved, just... You say, all you got to do is ask Jesus to come into your heart. And then after that, you, we can talk to you. And that's when you become born again. Now you can understand somewhat. And then it, there's a growing process. So bless them right now, Father God, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, have your way right now. In Jesus' name, we just speak life and not death. Blessings and not cursings. In Jesus' name, we will prosper in your name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good day.